Hey guys, welcome to a new video. On this video, this is actually the first video of a series about queues and background processing on Laravel. If you don't know what a queue is, or if you don't know what background processing is, check my video on the subject. I'm gonna link it on the description and maybe here, I'm not sure, but you should check it out. On this series, we're gonna cover what queues are, how do we work with them in Laravel, how do we optimize them. Uh, we're gonna talk about some high performance scenarios and also about monitoring. So if you're interested about queues, I, I, I can guarantee that this is gonna be a very good series on the subject. I've written a bit about queues. I have a blog post about scaling a monolith with queues. I'm gonna link it on the description as well. If you're interested in scaling and queues, you, you probably wanna check it out. But anyway, so for this project, we have a really simple project. We have an app that sends text messages. We are not actually going to send text messages, but we have some processing that mimics an API. So it takes, so it takes a while to respond, just like you would have with APIs like Twilio or whatever you want to use. Uh, sometimes they're really quick to respond. Sometimes they take a while. And we're going to talk about how to handle high load scenarios, how to queue messages, uh, the problems that you're going to face if you don't have queues and how you can solve them with queues. So without any further ado, let's go into the lesson. I'm gonna jump to my code editor and yeah, let's let's start this, see ya. All right, so to start things off, um, here we have two migrations. We have a messages table, which has uh, a, two, a two column, a content column, a status column, and a lead ID column. We also have the leads table. We're not gonna use it for now. For now, let's focus on the messages table. And like I said, we have an app that sends messages. To send a message, we have this class called message sender. Um, you can see that it doesn't actually do anything. We're just slipping for one second and then returning this uh, data transfer object called send message. The reason we are slipping one second is to kind of mimic an API. APIs take a while to respond. Sometimes they're very fast. Sometimes they they are actually slower than this. So I chose one second to show a few examples. I also wrote a seeder. So I'm gonna see the database. I already have that configured with one record. Uh, we actually have three records on the database, but the rest are sent. And I wanna show you something. So we have this route, which all that it does is it fetches all the messages that are pending. It instantiates the message sender. And then for each message, it sends a message and then updates the message status. So here's the first problem. If I want to send one message, I can hit this API, this URL, and it takes a while. It takes a little bit over one second, but it sends the message. Now, the problem is you often do not have only one message. You have a lot. So if I were to go here and I were to instead create, let's say five messages, and there we go, we have five messages and I were to rerun this, let's see how long it would take to send all the messages. Okay, you can see that it took about five seconds. I don't see it here. I think it's on timing. So yeah, a little bit over five seconds. And that's the first use case for queues. It's when you wanna uh, do a bunch of parallel processing and you cannot do it synchronously. Like I said, if you don't know what queues are, refer to my other video. It should give you some understanding of what use cases we have for queues and how it can help you. But anyway, this is the problem that our fictional app has. It needs to send a bunch of messages, but we cannot wait five seconds. We cannot wait. We, we can't send a message one by one. What we can do in this scenario is defer this to a queue. So we can put this in an intermediary place and that can be a database, it can be, you know, SQLite, it could be MySQL, it could be Redis. And then we're going to let Laravel workers pick those jobs and process them. And then we can define if we want to handle five jobs simultaneously, 10 jobs, 15 jobs, how many workers we want to have in each queue. The first thing that we got to do is encapsulate this process into a job. A job is just a class. It has some things that allow Laravel to understand that, hey, this is a job, it can be processed asynchronously and I can process it. Before you use queues, you gotta configure Laravel. On your M file, you have this key called queue connection. You have a couple options. Laravel comes with sync and sync just means that there's no queue. It is going to process everything synchronously. You can change it to Redis or you can change it to database. 
Now, for most cases, database is more than fine. However, Radis is a better option. So we're going to use Radis on the series. Once you change it to Radis, and assuming you have Radis running in your machine, it should work. I'm going to show you a few examples and how you can check it's working as well. Like I said, the first thing that we want to do is encapsulate this into a job. The process of sending a message, the task of sending a message. To create a job, we can open up our terminal and we can say PHP artisan make job. And then we can say, for instance, send message. Oops, we already have a job. It seems like I already created one. So if we go into send message, you can see that we have just a standard PHP class. It doesn't extend anything, but it does implement this should queue interface. And this interface doesn't actually have anything. This is just to let Laravel know that, hey, this class can be queued. It also uses a few traits like dispatchable, interact with queue, queuable, and serializes models. The serializes models trait is specifically very important. We're going to talk about it specifically later down the road, but that's what allows Laravel to understand that you've passed a model to a job, and then you can retrieve it from the database when it's time to process your task. So on the constructor of a job, we can specify what we want to pass to it. In this case, we want to pass a message. So we can say message, and we can use property promotion here. So we can say that we want to have a property with message, and this can actually be protected. And on the handle method, this is where we actually want to do stuff. So I, I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. So we don't have a message sender, but we can inject it through the constructor as a, an argument here. Uh, so we can say message sender and Laravel is going to automatically inject this for us. If you don't know what uh, service injection is, I'm going to leave a link to a Twitter thread that I made explaining how the service container works. Now, since we're passing the message on the constructor of the class, we can change this to this because we are referring to this property that we're going to pass the job. And we also should update it right here. So how do we use this? We have the job, but how does this, this work? Well, the first thing that we're going to understand is the actual processing, this task is going to be done asynchronously. It is not going to be done within the request lifecycle. So we don't need this anymore. Um, sorry, this. We still need to fetch the messages because we still need data to push into the queue. So what we can say here is really, really simple. We can say send message. We want to dispatch it. And dispatch is a method of the dispatchable trait. So you can either use this message, I'm sorry, this method and pass the arguments that you want to pass the constructor, or you can maybe use the dispatch function and either work. And then you just use the new keyword. So you can say new send message and pass in the message. Uh, for this last one, we're going to use this one because I think it's a little bit clear uh, on what you're doing. You see that you have your um, your class and its arguments. So let's do that. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to refresh the database and I'm going to generate a couple messages. But instead of generating five or ten, I'm going to generate 100. There we go. So if we were to dump and die this just to see what we are dealing with, we can just do messages. TT, like this, uh, you can see that we have a lot of records and in real world, you usually actually deal with more data than this. I have this app called Radis Insight. I'm going to refresh it. So it basically, it's kind of like SQL Ace for Radis. I'm going to clear um, Radis like this. So if we refresh it, you don't see anything. Radis is a database, uh, if you will, it's a no SQL database. And here's what's going to happen. I'm going to run this code. You can see that we are not actually doing anything synchronously. You can see that I have my M file configured to use Redis as the queue driver. And I'm going to run this. And you can see that the request was rather fast, 85 milliseconds. Now, if I come back to Redis and I refresh this, you can see that I have a list called Laravel database queues default. And default is the name of the queue. Since we haven't specified anything, it falls, it falls back to the default queue. And you can see that we have a hundred records. So it starts at index zero and it goes all the way to index 99. If I click in one of the elements, um, you can see that this is a JSON. I'm not sure if, uh, if this app allows us to see it um, within a better view. It doesn't seem like it, but you can see that it is a JSON. So, it has a UID, it has a display name. This is the internal handler for the job. 
But here on command name, you can see that we have the class that we want to call. So job send message. And then we have the arguments, right? So you have send message, which is a model identifier class with some arguments. Now, this is some magic Laravel does behind the scenes, and we are going to cover this later down the road. But the point is, we push data into this uh, middleman, which is Radis for now, and we're going to process this asynchronously. That's the beauty of queues. So this request took only 85 milliseconds, and then we push data into a middleman, and we're going to process it at a later time, which may be at the exact same moment, but in another process. And how do you handle, how do you process a queue? Well, Laravel ships with the artisan queue work. So if I run PHP artisan queue, it is going to show a couple um, commands that we can run. So we have listen, um, and we're going to talk about some of those commands. But for now, let's just run queue work. So if I run PHP artisan queue work, you can see that it is processing jobs from the default queue. And I only have one worker per queue. So you can see that each message is being processed individually. And you can also see that each one is taking about one second. Now, if we come back to Redis and refresh this, you can see that now we have less data. We only have 89 records. You see how we're processing this in an asynchronous manner. Now, something else that's very interesting. Let's say that we want this to fail. So instead of sending a message, this is going to fail. I'm going to throw a new exception. Cool. So if we run this, you can see that they all fail rather quickly. And if we go back to Radis, we now have some data as well. So the queue knows what failed. Let's run artisan queue to see which commands we have available. We have this retry, right? And we have this failed. So if we run artisan queue failed, you can see that we have lots of messages that failed. So something really cute about queues is that you have less catastrophic failure. Imagine that you had this running a command or something like that, and you weren't using queues. If the job were to fail, you would probably lose data. But with queues, you can set up your queues in such a way that you can try your job several times, or maybe you can save it on a failed uh, data set for a while and check it later. But the point is, you can retry this. So if we come back and run artisan queue work, you can see that we still have some jobs being processed. And if I refresh this and come back here, we still have a few records. Now, you can see that we lost a few records. And the reason is a job can only fail so many times. And that's something that you can configure. You have a threshold. So once a job fails, uh, I think the default is three times. So if it fails thrice, it is discarded. But anyway, so let's clear this. Let's add a couple more um, jobs into the queue. So Oops, that's not what I want to do. I want to go into Tinker, Jesus. And let's push 100 more jobs into the queue. I'm going to go into the browser, refresh it. If we go back, you can see that we have a lot of data. OK, so let's check something out. Uh, I mentioned that we were only running one worker. So although the messages were being processed asynchronously, we were still processing one at a time. With Laravel, running multiple workers is super, super easy. Check this out. I can run artisan queue work. So we have one worker running. And then I can spin up another worker. And then another worker. And now we have three workers running at the same time. And if I were to refresh this, go back, you can see we have 171. I'm going to refresh it, come back. And now we have... 154. So we actually have three messages being processed per second with three workers. Do we want to add more? We can't. We just need to spin up more processes. All right. I think that sums up how queues work for this lesson. We're going to go a little bit deeper on the next lessons, but I hope that it was a good introduction to queues and how you can leverage asynchronous or rather uh, background work on your uh, background processing on your layer of applications. Let me know if that video was helpful in the comments and if there's anything specific to queues that you would like to see on this mini series and I will do my best to provide this to you. So thanks guys and have an excellent week and an excellent day. See you in the next video, bye-bye.